Welcome to Midwest Sportsnet. Hello, I'm Joey McWilliams, and I am privileged today to be joined on the summit by the head volleyball coach at Central Missouri, Coach Flip Piontek, in his 13th season as head coach at the program. And uh, Coach, I know you've been there many years even beyond that, but let's just go ahead and, and get into where you are right now. A couple of wins this past weekend. You got a four-set victory at home against Pitt State. Then you traveled on the road, went south to Joplin, and took on Missouri Southern and took care of business in three sets there, 12-2 and two now on the year and number five in the country. Correct. <laughs> you got a good summary of the last week. Um, <laughs> you know, it, for us, each week is a kind of a separate entity for us, and we're five and one in the conference. Uh, our, our one loss is to Washburn, which is a very good – well, they're currently ranked number one, so there's no – there's no shame in losing to Washburn, but um, we do get a chance to play them again later in the season. Um, uh, unfortunately, there is volleyball that takes place before then that we have to make sure that we're still in position. We're taking advantage of when we play them the next time. So um, our matches last week were, I would call them more workmanlike than things of, of absolute beauty. But that's a really for us a key to the team that we can actually work our way through these matches where you're not playing. Oh, we're not going to play Washburn this week. Well, the other team thinks they can beat you. And so for us to actually work through that and make sure that we took care of business, uh, particularly at home, um, that when we lost the second set to Pitt State at home, that, that really was helpful to me as a coach in terms of emphasizing the importance that when you're ranked number five in the country, every single team that plays you, they want to beat you. It costs them nothing. They have nothing to lose. And so um, I thought it was very helpful. And when we went to Missouri Southern on Saturday, um, that really carried over. And I thought our players were able to, to handle the adversity of Missouri Southern. It was a late match on Saturday night. You know, it's, what do you do? We had to wait till their football game was over. So you're not starting till seven o'clock. As you're planning for the week, you're going seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock. Hopefully we can get back by midnight and give them Sunday off. But um, <laughs> it's a difficult travel on a late Saturday to play that match. So yeah, I can imagine. And on paper, at least, it looks like a relatively short trip. But when you factor in all those things, too, in the football game, yeah. yeah. The football game and the pregame meal and stuff like that. You know, you when we walked into the gym, um, I, you've been to Missouri Southern, I'm sure. It's a very they have a beautiful new gymnasium and the indoor track. Um, volleyball plays in the old gym, um, which really I kind of like it because it's really pretty much a volleyball gym now. And I've been there more than once. So, so for me, going in that gym is really not all that uncomfortable. The players are a little uh, surprised. The ceiling's kind of low. The basketball backboards are kind of over the court. So it takes a while to get used to it. But, you know, we walked in and the football game's going on. There's nobody there. <laughs> We're the only one in the gym. It's a good thing we knew where everything was. We knew where the locker room was. They had given us the code. So everything worked <laughs> out. Fine. But but we were kind of in there by ourselves for quite a while waiting for that football game to get over. That's I imagine that's kind of surreal. You <laughs> took on uh, Missouri Southern again. That That's your most recent match. Let's go back. You mentioned Washburn. Of course, Washburn, the number one team in the country, uh, only lost in the MIAA this year. Were you able to take anything away from that match, or, or was, it, was it just another match? Oh, no, no. Well, you know, we only have 20 matches in the conference, and, and the, the preseason schedule that we have kind of tries to prepare us for that conference schedule. And you know going in that there's going to be four or five teams in the conference that are very, very good teams that, that have a chance to beat you anytime you walk on the court. And Washburn is one of them. Uh, the team we play on Friday, Nebraska Kearney. Uh, we've already played uh, Northwest Missouri, and we played very well up there to allow us to come away with the win there. Um, Central Oklahoma next week. I, it's down the road. As the coach, I'm kind of looking forward to it. But as the players, we're really just focused on what's going to happen this weekend. So there are there, there are five. I don't know why Central Oklahoma isn't ranked in the top 25. They beat the number one. I, I, they beat Nebraska Kearney. They're the defending champions. I mean, I'm voting for them. I don't know about anybody else. So, <laughs> so that match against Washburn was the only part that I feel bad. It was a very good volleyball match, okay, is that we were home and I, I really felt like we let the home advantage slip away just a little bit. Um, the first set, um, 
I, I thought we were not ready to play at the level Washburn was. Um, I thought we responded very well on the second set. So we tied the match up at one to one. And then very typical of a good team, Washburn kind of found another gear and it took us a while to respond to that. And so it wasn't until the middle of the third set that we decided that we could and would play and we just couldn't quite catch up. Uh, when you lose a set 25, 23, it can, it just takes two plays just yeah. to switch two plays. And so um, that's what we talked about in terms of not letting those opportunities slip away. Um, plus, I don't remember the last time I played the number one team in the country at home. And, and that's a tremendous opportunity that, that um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's a rarity when it happens. And so you really want to take advantage of it when you can. And I thought we let one kind of slip away. And for you, the question that you're asking in terms of how we you learn from that, okay, it's does that one loss against Washburn cost you another one or another two down the road? And it did not. So that's really what I thought it was a great lesson, and I thought it helped us focus. I, I had really good practice yesterday, and we don't play till Friday. So for us to have a practice where it was a productive practice and I'm still four days away from playing – that's really helpful to me. And I, I think that goes back to Washburn. Well, coach, you're getting some solid play from all of your players. Let's, let's talk about a couple of okay. them, including Allie Offerdahl, uh, a senior. She has been stellar for you pretty much throughout her entire career. She's averaging 10.39 assists per set right now, 10.9 for her career, yeah. just an incredible number. And she's giving you help on defense too. When you get that kind of production in offensively, and she's still putting up 3.39 digs per set, I mean, it has to be huge to have her out there on the court at any time. It, um, I'm very pleased that you have noticed how much defense help she gives our team. Um, except for the Libro, which is our defensive specialist, Allie is by far the best defensive player we have. And her effort to play defense from her position, setters don't want to play defense. <laughs> they want to go set. They want they want to get out of there because if they dig the first ball, they can't set it. So um, for her, um, her positioning and her effort and her desire defensively really helps our team. It, it really just helps our team. Uh, she's a fantastic setter, and we've known that. But I really feel like defensively, as she's grown, um, that her contributions, both offensively and defensively, have done nothing but increase over the year she's been here. And and really, Allie is typical of those, I don't know what you call them, super seniors, COVID seniors. I have four seniors who who are who chose to come back to 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 take advantage of the, the year that the NCAA gave them because of last year's season. So when you have players that choose to come back. They want to come back. You know, so, some of my seniors, Audrey Fisher, for example, extended her study so she could come back for one more semester. Um, Allie is a nursing major, and she was going to be here anyway. But that fourth block of nursing is very difficult. Um, the time requirements for nursing are very difficult. Uh, she will not be at practice on Wednesday and Thursday. But, but that's okay. She's a, she's going to be a nurse in about when she graduates in December. So it's okay. We can work with that. And the effort that she's giving me as as part of that group of seniors is just it's very inspirational as a coach to see young women who who want to contribute to the legacy that they they're part of but but they're trying to kind of grow it after they leave and um audrey uh ally uh, aubrey bell um is just doing a fantastic job um hannah van buskirk who's kind of a, a multi-sport athlete here She's here. They're all doing a wonderful job helping the team focus on what we need to do. So it's it's a really unique year with so many fifth year seniors, but they're they're providing something that I really never expected from a group of young women. And it's really it's really fun coaching this young group. We're here on Midwest Sports Net, of course, with head coach Flip Piontek in his 13th season as the head coach at Central Missouri, and you've been with the program, Coach, I know for in your fourth decade now, so I know it's it's been that's a while, a nice 36, yeah, that's something, a nice, something yeah. like fourth that. Fourth decade is nice. That, that gives you a lot of leeway. Yes, <laughs> I, I completely understand that. You know, you you. by the way, let's let's talk about your defense, too, just for a moment then. 
you're holding opponents to a hitting percentage of 125, which is tops in the MIAA, an incredibly strong volleyball conference. I think that should go without saying, at least at this point, to anybody who's following along. But you're getting some good offense, too. Audrey Fisher is one of two players that is hitting better than three kills per set for you, along with Kirsty Nix. Fisher, 3.08. Nix, 3.17. But Fisher also with a hitting percentage that's top 10 in the conference as well for 339. So, you know, it seems like you're getting some consistent play then, not just uh, swinging away at everything. <laughs> they're connecting and, and they're making things happen. Well, again, Audrey Fisher is a, is a fifth-year player, and the setter is a fifth-year player. Actually, Audrey and Allie have played volleyball together, I'm going to guess, for about 10 years because they were on the same club. So they're very comfortable with each other. And conveniently enough, you know, I have the choice of where to put the six players on the court. Um, several years ago, it just became obvious that Audrey next, she needs to stand next to Allie. And, and their communication is spectacular. So how they work together um, is, is really wonderful. And it's, you know, the younger, at, Audrey is a middle blocker. And most times on a team, um, it's very difficult to get middle hitter swings because it requires kind of a better pass than to requires to set an outside hitter. So um, we call that being in system. And our back row players, our defensive specialists, our Libros, um, they're doing a great job getting Allie the ball in good enough position so she can set Audrey. And setting the middle as a priority for us is a little different than most teams in the conference. Um, the team we're going to play this weekend on Friday will set primarily the outside hitters and then occasionally the middle. So for us, it's almost the exact opposite of that. Our middles have been around for so long and they're so comfortable with all, with Allie the setter that we run as much middle as we can and then set the outsides to give them a little bit better opportunity. So I don't know that it's right or wrong, but because Audrey and Allie get along their their comfort level, their communication, um, it's it's a kind of a nice thing to really watch in terms of when you're sitting there on the sideline going, she's going to set Al, and she and sure enough, Allie gets the ball, she sets Audrey, and away we go. I go, you can tell before, you can just see what's going to happen out there. So, I'm sure that's really fun from your perspective to get to watch, especially sure. after this time. It's fun when it works, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that there is that too. There is that too. Well, it seems to be working more often than not. So I'll, yes. I, I would say that, Coach, your, your team, and and I would say your team because we mentioned you know into your fourth decade. Yeah. This the, you've been with the program for so long, and and this team has been ranked in the AVCA volleyball poll more than any other team in Division Two. It it's uh, it's incredible to see the consistency that's been there. Ranking started back in 1986, and Central Missouri, the Jennies, have been a part of so many weekly polls and in the final poll more than any other team in Division Two as well. So uh, talk about the consistency that it takes to, you know, ha see something like that play out then over, you know, 30-plus years. Well, to me – you talk about it being my team. It's really not my team, okay? Uh, you know, when I took over in 2009, um, my job was to not change anything. You know, sometimes coaches want to come in and ch create new systems and reinvent the wheel. Um, our team was spectacular when it, I, I've been here for a long time. And what we've been able to do over the course of the time here is to make sure that our players understand their role and what we're trying to get accomplished. Because I don't serve any balls. Okay. I, I don't <laughs> dig any, I don't hit any. It's, it's all them. And so for them to understand their, the important role that they have in the continuation of the tradition, um, we've been very fortunate. I, I don't know if it's fortunate or, or we've been, you know, our, our recruiting has been accurate in terms of who we bring into the program to add in so that they understand that, um, each individual person's statistics are not the most important thing. So um, yesterday in our in our film session, I'm trying to I show them the weekly stats and I just have to remind them, OK, look, I you can look at your stats. That's fine. But what I'm looking for is, yes, this past week we had 14 kills to set. I need that. I need that again next week. That's the first time this year we've had 14 kills a set for a whole week and we need to replicate that as a team and and they understand that that emphasis on the team and how we have handled things in the past 
and how we expect them to handle things in the future. I think they understand that role. Um, you know, from the transition from from Peggy to me, um, look, my my associate head coach, she's a we call her the senior associate head coach. Um, she's really the co-head coach as far as I'm <laughs> concerned. Uh, Caitlin's been here for, oh, my gosh, she graduated in 2009 and she was a five year player here. And and her how she fits in in terms of understanding that that role that we as coaches have and just helping the players maximize their talent. Um, that, that the way we keep it within our family, I guess, is a good way of putting it is, is I think the thing that's responsible for the continued success. Um, you know, and like you say, the conference, holy cow, you got one, five, I don't know how far Northwest Missouri moved up, but I'm going to guess they moved up into the top 10. Kearney's going to be 14 or 15 this week. Central Oklahoma should be in the top 20. I, I, I don't know what else you can ask. And if the players don't look forward to those kinds of competition, then they're at the wrong school. Um, when we schedule our preseason matches, you know, we schedule a really tough preseason because our conference is going to be tough. And if we go out and play really easy teams to win and get lots of wins, it doesn't help us at all. And so right. I thought our preseason scheduling this year was spectacular. Um, I thought how our players handled it. Um, th those I can't overemphasize those five. We have five seniors. Um, one of my players, uh, Hannah Engelkin, is a middle hitter from from Kansas City. Um, she's going to choose not to take her fifth year because – She's an audiology major, and she's already been accepted into into uh, her her training for her postgraduate training for her master's degree, and so she's not going to come back. And those five seniors having that experience on the court is really is I can't you can't quantify the, right. the the teamwork that evolves from having those five players um, really really being a cohesive unit. That's kind of they're. They're not pushing. Yeah, maybe pushing, maybe pulling. I don't know. But how their effect on the team, uh, I, I, it's it's very difficult to quantify, but it's very gratifying to watch. Well, sometimes things that aren't quantifiable, that doesn't that doesn't take away from their existence. No, it doesn't. Uh, by, by any stretch at all. I, I understand that. Well, Coach, then as as we, we wrap up our time, and I'm, and I'm very grateful for it, uh, you were talking about the, the schedule ahead. A team that was number one in the country won't be number one when they come to Warrensburg and will be Nebraska Carney. And you have a three match home stretch that's coming up. Uh, sure. Carney coming in on Friday and then Fort Hayes State coming in on Saturday. Central Oklahoma, you talked about them coming in next Thursday. So three consecutive matches at home. Talk about the way the schedule is continuing. Yeah, the, the schedule is very interesting for us in terms of that Friday, Saturday back to back matches. That, this will be the first time this year. Like I said, we, are, we, we do not have a travel partner. So when we play Carney on Friday, Carney will be done and they won't have anything on Saturday. And when we play Fort Hayes on Saturday, they won't have played on Friday. So by being the, the team without a travel partner, I think there's some minor disadvantage to being that team. Um, however, we are home this weekend. Uh, and so we, we really have to take advantage of it. And I think letting that at home advantage slipped through our hands with Washburn. I think that will help us this weekend because Carney may be three and three in the conference, but they're a really good team. Okay. Yeah. Just because they're not ranked number one in the country anymore, does not mean they're not a good team. Um, they're a spectacular team. And quite frankly, their team is led just like ours is just, just like Washburn's is by these fifth year seniors who who really are taking advantage of it when you have a a young player th these these student athletes opt to come back for a reason and the setter for nebraska carney and the middle hitter their sisters their sons the sons daughters of the coach yeah. um they've chosen to come back and they're doing a fantastic job with their team in terms of how they're making the team understand every time they get on the court that they think they can win and they're going to come into our arena on, on Friday night and they're going to think they can win. And I think that's what makes a match good. When we went to Missouri Southern on, on, on Saturday night, after we won the first set, I, I don't think Missouri Southern thought they could beat us after that. Um, they did a great job in set three, waking us up. <laughs> okay. Hey, you guys, we're still playing over here. So that was very good. But 
Nebraska Kearney will not have any lapses. They will not think that they can't win. And that's going to be a really, it's a really good test for us. You know, we're six matches into a 20, a, a 20 match conference season. Um, these next three home games, um, within the next week, we'll know where we're going to finish in the conference pretty regularly. And it, there won't be any doubt of what the pecking order is in our conference. Well, but that that still will say a lot toward the postseason as well. It we will. know not only is the MIAA a very tough league, but also the Central Region is a very tough uh, region to, to come out of to, to try to make a postseason run. But, uh, Coach, success to you all. Thank you so much for taking time with, with me today here on the Summit on Midwest Sportsnet. I encourage you, please subscribe to the channel. We cover much, much small college athletics and, of course, volleyball. We're big fans of volleyball here on Midwest Sportsnet. Uh, Coach Flip Piontek with the Jennies in his 13th season. The team's still number five in the country, but uh, a fun three-match <laughs> home stretch ahead should be a lot of fun. And for all the fans to come out, go to the multi and, and to watch some volleyball then. Coach, thank you so much for your time. Jerry, thank you very much. And I really appreciate the the hard work that you did, the, the background work, okay? Not everybody knows about the Central Region or our conference. That's very that's spectacular. I appreciate that very much, okay? <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.